Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Miss Pat. Hi, Miss Pat. Hi. Hi, Mr. Vernon Jones. Hi, Miss Owen. Hello. Hi, Miss Ferreira. Hi, Miss Moyston. And we're ready to go, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening, uh, working group. Good evening, those of you who are attending in uh, the public audience to our um, February 3rd meeting of the Community Safety Working Group. And uh, we're calling this meeting to order at uh, 5.32 p.m. And Seems we have a quorum, so I'd like to take a roll call right now, please. Uh, Ms. Owen? Here. Ms. Pat? Here. Ms. Ferreira? Here. Mr. Vernon Jones? Here. Okay. I think that's everyone for now, right? Yes. Just in my own screen here. Thank you all for being here. And uh, let me launch right into just some, uh, a couple of opening remarks in addition to the welcome that uh, took an attempt uh, to put some time frames on our, our meeting this evening to experiment with some, setting some limits on some of the topics so that we are more efficient about uh, starting and ending on time. Hopefully uh, the, we as a group will res respond in kind and try to, you know, work with this as as best as possible. This is just one stab at it, and perhaps, uh, you know, we may run over or may run under in, in a couple of pay cases, but we'll we'll try to pay attention to it, and I'll do my best to keep us on pace. Uh, a quick re agenda review. As usual, we'll go through public comment, and uh, followed by. Uh, open floor for our community safety working group to bring any new information to us regarding their experiences related to the work we're doing. And then our action items are, are four in number and some of them overlap a bit, but uh, we're looking to have an update of the Amherst Police Department uh, response to our, our questions that we've been posing to them, uh, schedule a meeting, uh, with the APD regarding follow-up questions. And that's more of a, a question rather than a, uh, an actual statement of decision in that case. Um, we want to update on the bid process. There are members of our community, our, our, our community safety working group who have been working diligently on the language of the bid process with the town and we'll get an update on and look, and look closer look at that uh, in our meeting tonight. And then uh, there was an issue that we uh, wanted to bring back and that had to deal with compensation for citizen participation in uh, the work of this group. Uh, followed by any upcoming events, uh, set our next meeting date. And as always, we will uh, entertain any other items that did not come before uh, the chair uh, in an anticipated manner 48 hours ahead. And then we'll adjourn. So let me uh, go to the minutes and I wanna uh, query our, our group. We, uh, let me just say right now, I, I know uh, that things are extremely busy um, at, the, at the town level right now and sharing information is, is uh, is possible <laughs> always, but certainly uh, hard to do at times. So uh, these minutes have just come out and I want to uh, defer to the, uh, the working group to ask if they uh, want to review these minutes now or defer review and approval of the minutes until the next meeting. Ms. Moyston. Um, so one, Ms. Uh, Walker just called me and said she's running about 10 minutes behind. And mm -hmm. so she'll be joining us shortly. And I'm, I haven't posted the minutes. Okay. 
And so what I don't, I was just a little concerned because you keep mentioning minutes. And so yeah. I'm wondering what you're well, they're not posted. They, they, we, they're, okay. So we, we can't, we can't do them then. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. All right. So moving forward, let's just go right into our, our, our public comment portion. If there are members of our community who would like to speak to us in the group, we are here to listen to you and we welcome your participation at this time. Well, well just sorry, but before finishing the minutes part, it's just so we'll just approve them next week. Is that yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. and to, to public comment for those who want to speak. At this time, no one has their hand raised. Mm -hmm. yeah. So can we move on to the next item until when and if people decide to speak or do we have to wait? No, I, I wait just a couple of a minute or so. I, um, we devote 15 minutes to this and sometimes people need to gather their thoughts, but we'll move on very shortly. Hi, Ms. Bowman. Hi. No hands yet, um, Ms. Moyston? No. Okay, so we'll uh, thank you all who are here and, and listening. Uh, we're gonna move uh, into uh, just an open moment for our community safety working group. Uh, make any opening comments you'd like to make before we get into the meat of our agenda. Um, anyone? Okay. All right. Looks like we're all, all clear. All hearts and minds are clear. And then, so we're gonna just go forward with this right now. And um, there are uh, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Owen, Mr. Cage and my, myself have been doing some follow-up on uh, the questions that we sent to the Amherst Police Department. They gave us a response earlier. We sent back another set of questions and they sent another response. And at this point, there are still some questions that need to be answered. Um, we've tried to put those together and I, I, I took some liberty here to put these comments together based on the categories we had available to us. And these are still remaining questions for uh, us to the police department. And I guess the advice and direction I, I'd like to hear from our, our, our working group is at this point, uh, do we want to continue to go back and try to get answers to these questions? Many of the questions that we asked were answered in narrative form there was not much of an actual numerical categorical database uh, in terms of a lot of the categories we were looking at, especially in terms of race and ethnicity. So we have these, this bank of questions. We could go back again and ask those. What I did want to raise is a question, and there, there may be differing opinions about this, as to whether or not we wanted to have a meeting with uh, some members of the Amherst Police Department who do data collection and reporting before, uh, before we hire a consultant to work with us. And the goal of that would be to see if we could garner some more information quickly rather than to back and forth written uh, responses, which may not necessarily, in my opinion, give us any more data or clearer data. And I my, the basis for my my saying that is I, I think in many cases, the, the data collection process is somewhat limited at the uh, police department. I, I do know from hearing from the 
from the chief that they have a 30 year old uh, data uh, system that they're working with. And that uh, some of the questions we're asking are pretty advanced in terms of what they might be able to dig up within their own system. So that was one thought. Um, there may be other thoughts uh, about whether we should do that now or wait till later. Um, but two, so two things, one of the things is, you know, do we wanna go back and, and in written form and see if we can get answers to these questions that um, are remaining? Do we wanna to try to do something like that uh, through a, a meeting with them in a Zoom format? Uh, or do we want to take some other tack? Uh, ultimately, for me, I think I'd like to just, I'd like to move this forward so that we're it, not going back and forth, back and forth, asking questions, and sometimes the questions change a bit. So I don't want to get us stuck in question mode. I'd rather move us forward as quickly as possible. So let me just say that, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, also defer to, to um, you know, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Owen, um, who are also working on this with me to, you know, hear what you're thinking. And I'm, I'm certainly open, not wedded to that proposal, but open to see what the next steps might be. Ms. Um, Bowman has her hand up. Ms. Bowman. So I think if we've gone back and forth with the Amherst Police Department a couple of times, I think that we should move on and go ahead and make getting those other things answered by whoever we hire in the um like whoever we hire like for the consultants we hire like maybe we can have that written in that they you know work on trying to get these questions answered and if they can't get mm -hmm. answered then you know working on okay so how are we going to change it so you guys can answer this question when asked. So that's mm -hmm. just what I was thinking. Thank you. So well, let me go uh, here, Ms. 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 Ferrer. Ferrer. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, and I mean, I'm on the group with, um, with Mr. Wiley and Mr. Cage and Ms. Owen too, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, have given, you know, obviously we've been kind of massaging some of this information and trying to come up with some of the gaps still from the first two rounds of questions that we had asked um, the police to, to answer. And I mean, I get it that some, some of this too, even if we, if we, if we hire consultants, I don't, th I don't know if they're going to be able to provide us with some of the information, especially if they don't have it within their system or if it's mm -hmm. old or what have you, because that might point out to what it is that they need to capture. Um, you know, that might be some of the recommendations we may need to make for them to capture certain information, right? Depending on whatever it is we decide to do, you know, but that might be something. But I, I guess for me, I do want to talk with, with them, right? But I guess what would be the, the, the most kind of useful time in, in terms of talking to them? I guess it's the when. Um, because the thing is, is that especially around the data with the, the race, gender, data right now, yeah, they've provided some things and obviously in some of the data, they're like, well, this this is fine, you know, especially around like kind of the stops and, and stuff like that. They're just kind of like, oh, it goes with, with, you know, how much, you know, we have in terms of information, you know, what have you in terms of like certain comparative analysis. But I really, we need to make our own kind of independent comparative analysis. Obviously, I don't have the way with all to do that, right? But that's not my expertise. Um, so that's something that the consultants that we hire are going to have to do, right? Comparative analysis with the population, with, you know, the breakdown in terms of whatever the kind of parameters it is that we need so that we can really be able to have an informed analysis of that information. So for me, I'd, I'd like to have that before, or, or not even before. I mean, I guess we could meet with them initially, but maybe we need to meet with them again or something like that, because I want to be able to say, okay, based on this analysis, this is what is showing up. What do you all say about XYZPQ? You see what I'm saying? Um, and we don't have that analysis yet. So, so that's my only kind of um, holdback in terms of, of, of meeting with them right now. 
Um, so that's why I had even talked, to, I had sent a response back to Mr. Wiley saying, well, do, you know, do we want to hire the, the consultants first and then meet with them so that we can get that information? Uh, but obviously I understand too, in terms of trying to move forward, but I guess we need to figure out the, the, the when and the how. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Um, Ms. Owen. First, when I was reading the email and we were going back and forth, I did think we needed to meet with the police department first. But the more I think about it, I do think we should hold off because I'd rather be completely informed with the data before we talk with the police. So after we hire the consultant. Mm -hmm. Other comments, um, Ms. Pat? So a uh, couple of things. <clears throat> um, I thought somebody had emailed us a bunch of uh, data from the APD, there was a group that was um, a resident that spoke in one of our meetings. And then I think there was a um, document that was sent to us. Uh, Ms. Marston, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. So I do. Yeah. it was the information collected from Defund 413 and then also the League of Women Voters. So I, I, rem I remember looking at those documents and not everything, but I, I saw some, um, I actually saw salaries of all the police officers, including the chief on that document. Right. Um, so that's one thing we should all take the time and go back and look at, at those documents, just a lot. There was some graphics too. Um, that was included in that document. In terms of meeting with the police, my expectation is at some point, we should meet with the police. I am flexible as to when, if we wanna wait till, you know, after the consultant or prior, but it would be nice for uh, the APD to come and present to us. And if you have questions, we ask them, um, in addition to trying to collect uh, data from the department. Another thing is what prevents us from requesting for public record uh, information. That's how, uh, when I was the president for special education at MS school system, when the school administration, when they refused to provide us with information, I had to get those documents from uh, DESI and posted it on um, CPAC website for everybody to see. So that's one option that we have. Um, they will force the APD to give us the information we are looking for. And also didn't um, the, the town meeting and at the time and also the select board had um, in 2004 to create a form traffic, traffic stop to get that information as to the racial um, makeup of the people being stopped. So I'm hoping that the APD have uh, data on that at least. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Patton. Uh, Mr. Bachelman and then Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones. I'm so, so I'm sorry, we're was late to this. Uh, I'm just looking at the screen and those are the, the questions that you have. I can follow up on it. Some of those are not APD, but it's, it's, it's my responsibility to get that to you. And I'm remiss on doing that. Ms. Moyston has asked me to, and I forgot, or I didn't forget. I just, and so I'll get those to you. Almost every one of those questions that I see under staffing and budget. Um, I don't know about the, in terms of hires for the past 10 years, if that's easily accomplishable. Um, and the other one, for those who were offered positions, what were the race and gender class? We, I, we may have that, um, but the other questions, I can pull that information together. You, and I, Ms. Pat, I don't think you should <clears throat> have to go through a public records request. I think we, well, I would expect the, the police department to provide the information that this group needs to do its work. Um, and we'll work to make that happen. Thank you. Um, and, um, and, you know, and the other thing I just want to mention listening to you that you don't have just a one shot to plead. Anytime you want the chief to come, you should feel free to invite him and you say, well, we want to invite you back a second time or third time or fourth time, whatever you feel would help your inform your work. And he's and his staff are more than willing to be with you anytime you want them to. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I think we probably are going to want to meet with the chief 
multiple times, mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest we see what information uh, Mr. Bockelman can get for us um, maybe before we actually meet with the chief. Mm -hmm. um, but he did send us data about stops by race. Yeah. And I actually think he sent us the answer to this one about how many police officers currently served in the military. And uh, I'm sure I saw an answer to that one somewhere. Um, but I say, let's, let's get what information Mr. Bockelman can provide first, um, proceed as quickly as we can with hiring a consultant uh, and then meet with the police department. I, I think we're going to, when we start talking about alternative services, I think we're going to have some questions about the numbers of calls that the police get around mental health and, and all. And, and I think we need that data in a way that we haven't quite asked for it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I think we're, let's, let's see what Mr. Bockelman can provide first and then let's plan to, plan to meet with the chief and we'll see whether we have our consultant by then or not. Carrera. <clears throat> Sorry, I was muted. Well, I mean, if we're gonna, and I agree with asking Mr. Bockelman uh, for the information, whatever information, Mr. Bockelman, you can pr provide to us, I think, yes. You know, just let us know which questions you're gonna tackle and um, so that we know, but I think if he's gonna be doing that, that's gonna take a little bit of time. Why not send these other questions to, to, to the chief in the meantime? You know what I'm saying? Send it to them, let them, let them get that to us. Even if there's some repeats in there, I'm fine with it. They'll just say we answered it already, you know. Um, get it out to them, and and you know, and then we'll go from there. I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, you know, as as Mr. Bachman pointed out, they they're supposed to be ready, willing, and able to to respond to us. So um, so let's keep asking the questions, and then they can say, hey, I do not have that information anymore, or whatever the the, the situation is, you know. And then we can set up once Mr. Bachman tells us, okay, Mr. Bachman, maybe that would be something that would be informative. It's like, how long do you think the information that you need to provide us is going to take? Because then we can give the police the same amount of um, time to answer the other questions that are relevant to them. So I would take ownership of the questions. I, I'm just looking at the questions that are on the screen. I can take ownership of those questions and within, you know, prior to your next meeting have either answers or explanations on what it would take to get answers for each one of those questions. Okay, yeah, so then we could just ask the police to, to answer those other questions by the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just in response to Ms. Ferrer, I mean, I, I was kind of on the fence in the conversation, uh, Ms. Ferrer, and I had about whether to wait, whether to go forward with this. And I think that going forward was thinking about you know, when are we probably gonna have a consultant in place to be doing this? And this might be quite a bit further down the line. Um, and that's okay if, if we're willing to do that. But uh, when I, you know, we look at our, our, our sort of proposed task list and what has to happen, there's going to be a lot this person is going to have to do within the month of, months of March and April and so if this person's just coming on, um, you know, the only suggestion was that we could do some, you know, this work talking to the police to see what, what we, how much we can get beforehand. I like the idea certainly of, uh, in Mr. Bachman, you're going after uh, some particular questions. And what I was gonna suggest is perhaps uh, the group that I'm working with, Ms. Owen, Ms. Ferrer, Mr. Cage, we could sort of zip through this list and see what, you know, like what, what Mr. Vernon Jones was saying, he said, I, I think we have an answer to that. We can take another look and see if we actually do. But um, but if Mr. Bachman, you want to launch that, great. And I think um, I like Ms. Ferreira's idea of, you know, sending whatever we can to them and get it back as quickly as possible. Mr. Bachman. Yeah, and so some of these questions, you know, as Ms. Boyston points out, uh, really go to HR or to accounting. Right. That's where we want the data from, because that will be, you know, they collect a lot of this data as well, not the APD necessarily. Yeah, this is where I think that the, the town could be helpful. And that was part of the other point I was going to make is that we're asking for the police department for stuff that they might not easily be able to put their right. finger on. 
but the the uh, the town in in its system mm -hmm. was able to to gather that stuff very quickly yeah. and put it in there. So that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would speed up the the information sharing process and get us to where we need to be. So. Um, So that's what we're going to do. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. And Mr. Bachelman, if you if there's something you you need from us other than what we are just talking about, can, please let us know. We'll be happy to do. So, that. so the only thing that I, there might be, I might need have some clarification questions for you in terms of what you want in terms of when when accounting puts out a report, they can say, "Well, I can give you this, this, this," and I'll circle that back to you, the group, and see if that's what you're looking for or not. Okay. okay. One thing, one point I want to make, and, um, you know, please chime in Ms. Ferreira and um, Ms. Owen, if, if you will. There's this point of there not being a lot of racial ethnic data available and available in a way that can be analyzed and, you know, compared um, is pretty substantial. Is the absence of it is pretty substantial, I mean, across the board. So. I don't know if that's something as we're thinking about down the line, what kinds of capacity might the police department, th this is maybe feeding into possible recommendations, but thinking ahead, what kind of information, new information are we gonna be asking the police department and other departments that say even in the town uh, that we're not asking right now, or either we're asking and they don't have the capacity to collect it. So, um, you know, just thinking down the line, that's that's something to, to note. I think there's going to be some, some still some gaps in the, the racial ethnic uh, categories that we'll have to fill. Ms. Moisten. Yep, I just wanted to speak on that. So the, when you complete an application for the town, so the, it it's optional whether or not you want to um, identify yourself to a particular race. And so the information isn't required. Right. And so we have some of it, but it's not necessarily, it wouldn't be all of the police, you know, like a total of all police officers. It would be just those who identified themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you all. We'll, we'll pr proceed and govern ourselves accordingly on that. And um, thank you for that guidance. I think we all, you know, I needed it certainly. And I'm glad you had a chance to weigh in on it uh, as well. Um, so it actually took care of A and B in terms of the meeting because that was part of it. That was part of the, the question. So I'd like to go directly to the update on the, the bid process. Look at next steps. I want to thank, um, think of who, who was on that, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones and uh, Ms. Walker, were you on that? Ms. Walker, there was someone else, wasn't there? And Ms. Pat. And me, yes. and Ms. Pratt. Yeah, thank, thank the three of you for putting in uh, that extra work on that and getting that to us. And um, I'll just defer to you all and you can start where you'd like. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, the, we, we met as a subcommittee uh, with Ms. Moyston and with Anthony Delaney, the town procurement officer. Uh, what was that just yesterday? Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we had, each of us had made some suggestions for changes to the, what was then the current draft. Uh, and I think Mr. Bockelman and Mr. Delaney weighed in on that. Um, but in our meeting, we went through the document sort of line by line uh, with Mr. Delaney's help. Uh, and there may be one or two things about dates that we still need to work through with Mr. Bachman, and maybe we can do that now. Um, but I think what we've, we're, we're ready to propose that uh, the document, I think as you received it with maybe some possible date clarifications, mm -hmm. uh, we're ready to recommend that to the, to the working group. Is, is that right? Alicia and Ms. Pat. Ms. Pat, you have your hand up. And then Ms. Ferreira. Uh, yeah, sort of, it's right. But there's another issue that we raised yesterday that wasn't resolved in terms of um, 
the level of um, CSWQG involvement in, in the consulting work. If we want to pull up the, the document, I can show you guys. Okay, uh, while you're pulling that up, I want to, uh, I, I see, um, Anthony, you have your hand up. Ms. Ferreira was next with her hand. Yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm going along the same lines of uh, what Ms. Pat was talking about. The, the one that, the only thing, and thank you so much, you all did a great job just kind of, you know, going along with what we had discussed last week. It looked really great. Um, besides, like you all said, like the dates and stuff that, that, that we can discuss with Mr. Bachman. But the other thing that I noted, and I think it goes along with Ms. Pat, is the, um, the line that says scope of work. And the first line is that a successful vendor will work at the direction of the town manager based upon guidance provided by the CSWG to provide the following services. So I guess I was confused about that because before I thought we were we were the ones that were gonna be providing the guidance to the consultant. So I, that's a change. So I just wanted to get some background on why that change happened. So what happened yesterday was um, we deferred it for Mr. Delaney to check in with the town manager. Is that correct? No, it wasn't going to discuss, okay. Mm -hmm. So everybody is here tonight, so that's good. That's good, yeah. So Mr. Delaney, thank you for, for joining us. Um, and you had your hand up after Ms. Ferreira. I was wondering if you wanted me to pull the document up. And yes, please. Start. I will leave that to um, the, the folks who are working on that and we'll let them lead from, from where they are and we'll follow suit. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so I did, uh, the version you have has the old dates, but I did manage to connect with uh, Mr. Bockelman this afternoon to update them. <laughs> so the dates in the version on the screen in front of you haven't updated, but everything else should match uh, the draft that you were emailed. Uh, is this legible? Should I zoom in more for everyone? Everyone's good? Okay. That's good. So, um, would you like me to kind of give an overview of the, because that we did make some pretty substantial changes uh, from the version that was presented to the entire committee last week. Would you like me to do a general overview of what's changed and then maybe start going section by section? Yes. That sounds okay. good. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so we have converted this from an RFP, a request for proposals to an invitation for bid, which is a straightforward uh, competition on price once you meet the minimum qualifications. Uh, this, we have structured this to allow for multiple awards. So the scope of work has been divided into three main categories uh, and a vendor can bid on one or all of the one or two or three of the items. And if they're the low price for that category of work and they're otherwise qualified, then they will be awarded. Um, so uh, part A is the community engagement function, um, which is, I, th I think basically the stuff under community engagement, I believe is basically unchanged. Um, I have taken the previously, previously timeline and budget and report were items in the scope of work on their own. But since we are dividing this procurement into up to three contracts, I have placed the timeline, I've placed timeline and budget on its own under part A, and also part of the report section also under part A. Um, part B is the emerging trends section, which I believe is also largely the same. I have again included timeline and budget under it and the entirety of the report uh, aspect of the work under B. And then C is a, I believe it's a new addition from the version that was presented last week is provide insights to address structural and systemic racism in policing. Um, meetings were previously their own item under the scope of work, but since we're not sure how many vendors we have, I, I pulled it out into just a general section under the scope of work. Um, where we're, however, however many categories of vendors awarded, they'll be expected to attend up to 25 hours of meetings over Zoom. 
this section in blue, uh, I believe was a suggestion from Mr. Wiley. And I think we'd like to ask the committee how they feel about it, that um, perhaps we set up a, an expected calendar of meetings uh, if the committee is comfortable in scheduling itself in that way, it would set up the vendor with an expectation for how and when they would need to be available. Uh, if the committee is interested in, in deciding it at this time. Um, the interpretation and translation section has been updated. Uh, we discovered that the town has its own uh, interpretation services that people can schedule. So we've taken that out of the procurement and that will be in the town's hands rather than the vendors, which, uh, which I think is, will make it easier for any vendors who are applying, uh, not having to coordinate those services that the town already can. Uh, submittals, I believe are unchanged, except that we did uh, specify the supplier diversity office certifications that a vendor could submit to, uh, these are the four categories that the SDO certifies companies in the state in. Uh, and the rule for award has been updated for three categories. Uh, the boilerplate sections about bid terms are unchanged. Uh, minimum requirements have been simplified a bit. Um, tried to make them a little clearer. So uh, a prospective vendor will have to demonstrate two positive references uh, for any of the following areas. Um, similar projects, anti-racist work, consulting contracts with other communities, or lived experiences of racism and references documenting a positive track record of working with communities on racial equity and police reform. Um, and those references will be evaluated based on this paragraph that the vendor demonstrates an understanding of the role racism plays in policing historically, uh, implicit racial bias in policing, uh, uh, respect and dignity for all people in marginalized constituencies and an ability to manage multiple assignments and meet deadlines. Uh, this is the bid form, which uh, I don't believe anyone has seen yet, um, but uh, essentially the three items are their own lines and a vendor can write in their price for each or write no bid if they're only bidding on certain ones. Uh, this is just reminding them what they need to attach. And they sign here, standard town contract. I've, um, and then standard forms and then the legal ad. Um, so uh, under this timeline, if we approve tonight, I will submit the ads to the Gazette tomorrow. Uh, so they should be able to run on Monday the 8th. Um, we would have it live for bids for two weeks, but I don't like things due on Monday. So I would have it due on Tuesday the 23rd. Um, and uh, I we also discussed, this wouldn't be part of the document, but we also discussed in the subcommittee meeting uh, that the committee might want to designate one or two people to work with me to evaluate the, um, the references, to do reference checks. It's not something I really want to do on my own. I would definitely value input there. Uh, that wouldn't necessarily need to be decided tonight. It could be decided any time before the bids are due. Um, and yes, so, the, uh, so that's the bid due dates. And then with Mr. Bockelman this afternoon, um, the draft of the report would be presented to him on by March 19th with a completed report the following week on the 26th. So I have set the end, the expected end date of the agreement for April 1. Um, and I will stop talking now. I think that's it. I actually had a question. Go right ahead. So are we only advertising in the Gazette, <coughs> excuse me, for this, or are we gonna advertise across the state for this? Uh, we'll be putting this on the Combi's portal, which is the, the bid advertising site that the state runs. Uh, we'll advertise okay. in the Gazette, 
We'll put it on the town's website. We will do a social media push uh, through the uh, through the town's channels, and uh, of course, this committee will be free to publicize the link, share it with other groups. Um, it'll it'll be a it'll be a public bid, so it'll be we won't be paying for ads anywhere else, but uh, I imagine we'll be propagating the information elsewhere if there are other news outlets uh that we want to reach out to uh we could we could we could do the bulletin if uh or right. the telegram and gazette or, or someone or anywhere if the if the committee thought it was worthwhile all right and the other um question well the other thing is just a statement um i might be interested in helping you out with that so um i don't know if jen you can just put that in the notes that i might be interested in that but yeah, that's it. Thank you. Ms. Ferreira. Sorry, I just had to unmute. Um, so I guess just for clarity's sake, again, just to make sure we're all on the same page since this is such a, um, an important aspect of, of what we're doing and obviously gonna be paying consultants. Uh, so the April 1st, again, is just based on what we had talked about previously, right, which is the first part of our charge, and then we're going to do another bit for the second part that will include the second report? Correct. Okay. All right. And then, um, and then for me, the other one is still the same question that I asked previously. Um, why is it that we're working at the direction of a town man manager based upon a guidance? So not clear on that. So generally, uh, consultants and, and other vendors hired by committees still work at the direction of whoever the staff liaison is, if only because the staff liaison is, a, is available always during business hours and the committee, if there's a question, would need to post a meeting, assemble, and, and then answer it. So the, mm -hmm. staff is, the staff is there and flexible. Uh, it's not a requirement, but it, it does tend to be the way that other committees have have done work, have done have have hired people in the past. Well, can we then make it a little bit stronger, though? I mean, I guess we'll work at the direction of the town manager based upon guidance. I'm just not liking that guidance part. I was going to say more direction, <laughs> you know, upon got upon direction provided by the CSWG. You know what I'm saying, or something like that. Um, I guess it just it seems it a, it makes it a little bit lukewarm in terms of what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I would I would feel better with a, a stronger word there. Um, you know, I'm fine with it being if that's what needs to be. I, I get what you're saying because we're not going to be you know always available because we're not there from whatever time you know nine to three or whatever your offices are open. I get that. However, I just want it a little bit strong as opposed to just guidance. I'm, I'm not feeling that. Um, Ms. Walker and then Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, so I'm wondering if you can explain, Mr. Delaney, what the real tangible difference would be if we were to change the, the language there. Would that require us to, like, we couldn't appoint one person to answer those things? Or I just want to know what it would actually look like if we changed the language there. Uh, I, I don't know that I have a an exact answer for you there. Um, it would it would depend on uh, it, it depend on what you changed it, it to. I think the I think the effect of I think uh, it might serve to clarify the relationship between the town manager and the committee. Um, but I think as long as the basic words are the same, the fact will remain that uh, they'll be directed in their day to day questions. By the town manager with the with the overall scope of work determined here, and I don't know if I, I would if if uh, Mr. Bachman wants to weigh in here. Yeah, let me go to Mr. Vernon Jones first. He had his hand up, and then Mr. Bachman. Um, I I I'll wait till after Mr. Bachman, if I may. Okay. I also had my Mr. hand raised So I th I think those are, it's good points, and and I think um, you know. I understand what uh, Ms. Ferrer is saying is maybe a better word than guidance, um, supervision, or um, 
you know, policy direction, policy, policy direction, something like that. Uh, and under our town form, under our form of government, the town manager signs all contracts. So technically, no, not technically, realistically, the town manager is the contracting authority um, just by definition. Uh, since this is a um, monetary contract, um, the town manager is ultimately responsible for making sure that the, the, the tasks are completed. And I sign off on you know, the bills before they get, get uh, sent out. So committees don't do that function. And that's why um, you know, the town, you know, we usually have a staff person you know, before I approve a bill, if there's a different contract, that staff person has to sign off saying, yes, they completed tasks A, B, and C, because the vendors often will come and say, hey, we're ready to get paid, we're ready to get paid. It's our job as staff to verify that the, the work was done. And in this case, it'd be have to, you know, make sure that you were satisfied with the work and that it was done as well. But ultimately it's up to the manager to sign off on those um, requests for payment, which is becomes, that's why you have a contract to make sure it's clear there is a person who's ultimately responsible for that. Um, but I think, you know, if you wanted stronger language, I'd be supportive of that uh, for, the, for the working group to, to be clear that it's the working group that's helping to set the agenda for this. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. You, de you deferred to Mr. Bockelman, so I'm going to go back to you then, Ms. Pat. Okay. Um, I would suggest that we make this work at the direction of the town manager within the context of direction from the CSWG. Say that again, please. The successful vendor will work at the direction of the town manager within the context of direction from the CSWG. And he wrote it, he updated it in the, in the yellow. Yeah, I see. Uh -huh. I mean, if somebody has better wording, I'm, I'm not attached to this, but I, I, I also wanted this stronger. Yeah, let's, let's sit with that for a second. Let me go to Ms. Pat, she had her hand up after you. So a uh, couple of things, um, in listening to the town manager, um, from business perspective, it makes sense for you know, a staff person to be responsible for financial aspect of the consulting work and some certain questions because there are also legal issues involved as, as well. So, um, Thank you, Mr. Buckman, for explaining that. Um, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Delaney for the flexibility yesterday when I raised that we should include um, other um, marginalized group like the vets, uh, women, um, certification. So I'm very excited and happy that that was included. Thank you for the flexibility. And the last thing I want to say is that I really enjoy working with the subgroup. It's been fun. And I would like to volunteer myself to be part of the review to help Mr. Delaney, if that's OK with the group. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Mr. Bachelman. So I have one comment and I actually have a question for Anthony, which I did not think in advance. So the, the first one is, um, can you go to the section, if you, the qualifications for winning the bid, uh, there, there are, it's, there are just two things that people have that successful bidders, they have to have these two positive references under okay. these thing. If, if you, if the, the review team says yes, then you open up, the, then you look at the price and say the lowest bid who said yes gets the gets the contract. So it's a it's so the, it, what's very important is that the minimum requirements be exactly what you want in this. So you, if someone is is able to hit all those things, you're going to give them the contract. No no ifs ands or buts. So that's number one. Number two is something I ask I, I didn't think of until now is, Anthony, suppose there is you know a vendor who's a low bid on A and C. But there's a different bid, but they're not they're the second lowest bidder on item B. But the working group really wants to work just with one group, one one person or group or whoever it is. Do they have to divide up the bid into three three sections? Yes. Wow. Yeah. 
the we can we can we have to set our rule for award in advance so if we are doing up to three contracts based on three individual areas then we're awarding the lowest for each area if we value having one vendor then we should set our rule for award that we're looking to award one vendor it's, it's okay we, we 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 need to make our rules clear up front so that the the vendors know what they're competing against and how to structure their bids okay ms walker uh, we had a brief conversation about that yesterday with the subcommittee and i think our thoughts around this and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Pat and Mr. Vernon Jones, was that having it split into three sections would really allow us to look or allow the vendors also to apply their qualities to the specific tasks we're asking them to do and not to try to spread them thin or have them have stronger suits in certain areas and not in other areas. That's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a uh, question, uh, Mr. Delaney. So if we were going to, um, you know, April, let's say April 1st is when we're looking to, to kick this thing off and we're supposedly gonna have three, let's say we have, we have three different vendors in place ready to go on April 1st. Uh, I, I think April 1st was actually our targeted wrap up date with, uh, with wrap these up date. folks. Okay, that's what yeah, I wasn't we would, clear about. We'd, yeah. we'd, I think we'd be looking to have them have three vendors ready to go by end of the month. Yeah. End of? End of, end of February. February. End of February, yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, I'm clear about that. Mr. Vernon Jones, you had your hand in Ms. Walker. Well, two things. One is, uh, you know, if we're not even gonna open the bids until the 23rd, means we may not get an award till the end of, very end of February which means there's really only a month to do all of this work. Um, so I wanted to raise again the question of whether the, maybe that April 1st date can be pushed back a bit. Um, but also in the way this is written, uh, where the timelines are, I'd like to make it clearer that the consultant's report has to be submitted to the working group. Uh, the working group is gonna submit it to, to Mr. Bockelman. Um, and I know, I think we all understand that, but the way it's written seems like it might mislead the, um, the, the bidders. Oh, I see what you mean, okay. Um, Ms. Walker, were you, were you next? I'm giving a list here of things. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, thank um, you. So I was actually gonna ask Mr. Delaney to scroll up to the dates as well and to just go over them again, because I, my understanding was that if we were to approve this tonight, we could have the bidding open on the 8th. It would close on the 23rd. Um, I don't know how long it would take for us to to choose a contract and for that to be signed off on and for the work to begin. And I feel like March 12th for them to have an entire draft mm. is a little bit unrealistic because yeah. if we look at what we're asking them to do and then the amount of time we're giving them to do it, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Especially if we do end up awarding a consulting company that's not based in Amherst. I don't really know how we're going to expect them to get the work done in that amount of time. Yeah, if uh, if we need a, if we need a, a date for the draft to be presented to the working group, then to the town manager, then the final report. That yeah, that seems like too much. We would have, I, I think we would need to push the schedule back a bit. Yeah, I, yeah Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Ferreira. I, I just wanted to ask Mr. Bachman what, <clears throat> what do you think is possible in terms of putting back, pushing back the dates here? Well, I think, oh, I'm sorry. 
Yes, go ahead. So I think that um, we can certainly take out that that the 19th to 26th, that's too much time. I don't need that much time. You know, we can push that a little bit. The, the real question is that we established March 31 as the date that the council is looking yeah. for a report from the manager. Right. Um, and so um, if um, the concept of this was that the, the consultant would have a draft, it would be submitted, there'd be a week to turn it, to go back and forth with the working group and the manager, and then it goes to the council by the 31st. So I think, um, you know, even if we made that scrunch up those dates, it buys you a few weeks, but it still really is, I mean, what Ms. Walker said, it's That's, three weeks of work, yeah. you know? Um, and I guess the question to Anthony is, is there any way we can open bid? The bids will be decided on the day they get opened. The number will be the number. And then mm -hmm. we'll move into contract phase. Um, is there any way to move, if it goes into the, if we get get it out tomorrow, is there any way to move it? It, it has to be published for two day, two weeks. Is that accurate? Right. Yes. And the newspaper is a two business day uh, head uh, lead time. Yeah. So uh, approving it tonight, the earliest it could be available is the 8th. I, I could have it due on the 22nd instead of the 23rd. That's a one yeah. day. Uh, as you say, we would know the, we'll know the winning bidder, the ostensible winning bidder is right off, but we'll still have to check the references. Right. So. Um, and then the other thing is we could go to the council and uh, with the council, if the working group wanted to, to say we March 31, knowing that the procurement schedule can't be achieved, we need more time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Walker, then Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Ferreira. Um, I have a couple of things. One, I'm just looking at dates here. Um, and so if we were to close the bids on the 23rd and we had a committee who could look at those bids together on the 24th and choose somebody, would we want to put in the contract that we would want a first meeting to happen immediately and set that date in the contract that we need the consultants to be able to meet with the working group before, because then that only gives us one, two, three, four working, four business days before the 31st of March that we could even meet with them for our first initial meeting. So I think that really actually doesn't make sense at all. Um, and I think it's impossible. And I think we should probably think about going to the town council and asking them now about our time. Yeah, Mr. Vernon Jones, then Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I, I think we have to ask the council for another month. I, I don't think no responsible bidder would bid on this as a no. job to be done in three weeks. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing is, and that's what we have to hear from Mr. Bachelman is, is in terms of the budget and all those things. Remember, that was the reason why they put right. the A part of the charge as, um, you know, the, the what, yeah, and the date in terms of when we needed to get, get right. it, you know? Um, the other thing too we need to think about is that, and, and I agree, and hopefully if we can, if we can extend it, I guess we should, you know, but, but I guess we get, we need to be careful in terms of obviously the budget stuff, but I think we should. Uh, but the other thing is, is that most likely we're going to get multiple um, folks working on this. They're not going to work on all three. They're going to be working on one of them. So for me, at least, that makes me feel a little better. It's not a, like they're working off all three pieces. They're working on one of the pieces, even though even one of the pieces is, is a lot. But, you know, we need to think that. They, it's their team. If they're bidding on it, they're saying they can do it and they need to meet, you know, meet our, our deadlines. Mm -hmm. We're also have to, we're gonna have to consider, you know, if we go with three, you know, consultant entities, let's say, those are, could be three distinct different contact, contacts we need to make on a fairly regular basis with these folks because of the three different pieces they're working on. And um, I'm thinking about the time too, on how to manage that. Um, and again, going back to Mr. Bachman, what you were saying about the 31st and the report and the, the budget process, um, how far could we extend this work and still be solvent with uh, the budget work you have to do for the town. I think that's 
so I have to submit a budget to the town council on May 1st. Um, we're obviously working on the budget. We've been working for months on it. We have not done significant work in this, you know, we, you know, sort of deferring to the working group's work and knowing that, but anticipating that there's going to be something that has to happen in this area. Mm -hmm. um, but given that, it, you know, the, our budget will be, mm -hmm. I can, uh, not sure exactly how to approach it. We, we, right. It's a money thing, so. But by you know, I we can't have it due on the same day my budget is due because it it's not going to be helpful at that point. Miss mm -hmm. Pat and then Miss Walker, then Miss Ferrer. So, I don't know about you guys, but is there any of us here who have not come up with alternative um, public uh, public safety um, services for? our community. Isn't that what the you know, town council is asking for, for us to uh, submit it, our draft, not final? At the end of, at the end of uh, March. Isn't that what they're asking for, for us to submit a draft? My understanding is we're supposed to be giving them, uh, let me, I'm sorry, I, I interrupted my flow there. Um, Ms. Ferreira, I think you, I think you were next. No, I think there was someone else. Ms. Before. Walker, I'm Ms. Walker then Ms. Ferreira, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, mine is gonna be like a little bit off track, but I just wanted to propose that because you did um, mention we'd have to meet with three separate groups if we award three separate contracts um, on a regular basis. Um, if it would be possible, we could set like one meeting and try to just invite all three and have that day be a day to check in with our contractors instead of setting up three separate meetings. Um, and that might be something we might want to think about. I know mm -hmm. it might be hard to crunch it in, but I, it's a time crunch anyways. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is even though this is split into three separate sections, which does also make me feel a lot better about it, it's a substantial amount of work. And if, and if we go through each section and actually look at what we're asking them to do, I think we need to be a little bit realistic here. Like we're asking them to go into communities, to collect data, to do all of these things. And if we think about how long it has taken us to get the amount of data and the things that we have gotten right now, it's very unrealistic. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, and I hear that, uh, Ms. Walker, obviously, you know, but the thing is though, we have to be able to, for me, my thing is with this committee is that we have to be able to make recommendations that are going to be one um, time sensitive and also doable. Because if we make recommendations, like Mr. Bachman said, you know, come May 1st, if we, we submit something the week before, whatever, they're not even going to take our recommendation seriously. It's not going to be put into place. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I think, you know, I mean, we could go maybe, my, my proposal would be maybe if we could go two weeks after that, Mr. Bachman, would that work? You know, like maybe up until April 9th or something like, so we give them two extra weeks. My thing is, listen, if you're going to bid for something, that means you, you, you're gonna deliver. You know what I'm saying? I can't make the judgment for these folks. If we get no bids, we see that we were ridiculous, right? No one, no one you know, no one <laughs> thought that they could do it. <laughs> That we were being ridiculous about it, but if if you're going to bid on it, you know you you need to have the staff to do what what you say you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? I can't make the decisions for them. What I can do is say to Mr. Bachman, tell me what are the dates that we can extend it by, so that our recommendations can be can go into effect because this is going to be budget re uh, relevant. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to make recommendations so late that then it's not even taken into consideration. Then what's the point of hiring all these consultants, wasting all this money, and then our recommendations don't get put into place? Because me, that's the reason why I joined this committee is because, mm. hey, we're working all of this, we're making recommendations, it needs to be taken seriously and put into place. Mm -hmm. Pat, did you have your hand up? You know, I did, and I'm thinking from this, uh, business perspective, if we're lucky enough to have uh, enough bidders and we select them, you know, and they give us the budget, they should be able to hire appropriate personnel that will do the work for them. We, you know, we demand that we want it within three to four weeks. I mean, it's a business, you know, they're getting paid to do it. I also think that um, 
if we wait until the consultants uh, make a presentation to us, we might be kind of late in, in the submitting a draft of our own recommendation about alternative public safety. So, I mean, I'm okay with what Ms. Ferreira has suggested about April 9th. I'm okay with that, but I don't know about you guys, you know, but I've already made up my mind, you know, um, some alternative uh, services I would like to see in Amherst already, regardless if we have consultants or not. And that's why I joined this group. So let's not kid ourselves. You know, I'm now waiting for the consultants uh, to give me additional or new information because I, like so many of you in the committee, you know, live the experiences every single day. So let's, come on. Yep, that's what I want to say. Thank you. So let me go back, uh, if I can, Mr. Delaney, to, to you. Um, so let's, and, and I guess this is what Ms. Walker was pointing to too. I'd, I'd like to go back to this schedule. So let's say the, the earliest first moment we can do something is is um, what? The, what did you say? The eighth. The eighth is when the bid will go live, when it will be available for people to read and respond to. And, and then the twenty second was would be. You said we said the twenty third at first, but then you said the twenty second. We could probably have it get it back. Yeah, that would be the that would be the earliest we could set as a due date for responses. Okay, and then the responses we we look at them and a decision is made. I guess that's what you said, Mr. Bachelman, at that moment. So we award the, if I, I can speak. Uh, so yeah. we we award the apparent. We'll, we'll know the apparent low bidder uh, immediately upon opening the bids. Uh, then we need to make sure their references check out. Uh, assuming we are able to contact the references right away, then maybe the next morning we we know who they are. Um, if there's if it takes longer to contact or check references or if there's questions about their references, then it could take longer. But if we're, if we're lucky, then we could, we could have that confirmed the next morning and I'll have the contract ready to go, uh, you know, with 24 hours after that, hopefully. So that's, let me just, that's, that's a, that's definitely a best case scenario. Yeah. But, yeah. So let me just take this up one and then I'll get to you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So, the, so let's say the 22nd and then then let's say that the, the 24th, um, you know, reference is clear, everything's good. What happens next? Uh, we send them a contract. Uh, they read it over, sign, return to us. It's signed by the uh, comptroller and then by Mr. Bockelman. Uh, well, actually, probably just the comptroller because it'll probably be a low value. Uh, uh, it'll be signed by the town personnel. Um, and then at that point, once it's been signed by the town, the work can proceed. Uh, we would put them in touch with uh, with their staff person, who I assume will be will be Mr. Bockelman, and we'll arrange our kickoff meeting or give them whatever instructions we need to give them to start the work. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Walker. Um. Well, given that we have detailed some things that we want these references to show, uh, I would propose that we ask for written references. Uh, we'll still have to make phone calls to confirm them. Uh, but in terms of a group, you know, two or three people analyzing whether they meet our criteria, it would be helpful to have them in writing. So I would specify that. I would recommend we pick the latest date Mr. Bachman thinks is, is workable for the ending date and adjust the report dates. And I like what Alicia said about um, let's, you know, if we're gonna open, receive these on the 22nd, can we decide whether our meet, could our meeting be on Thursday the 25th and could we put right in the bid that the successful bidders would be expected to meet with us um, on the uh, evening of uh, February 25th. Mr. Bachelman. So I'm th listening to the members of the committee. And so as Ms. Pat said, there a lot of thought has already gone on to into the alternative 
models for, for policing, which is task two, which is item two in this in this invitation for bid. And one thing the committee could consider is, or the working group could consider is segment that out and have that a standalone th alone thing that has the, the you know, March 31st, April 9th, whatever it is, deadline. The other two tasks, they can go beyond that deadline date. The, you know, the, the outreach work and the, um, if, if you want to, I mean, I'm just trying to think of how can the committee use its time most expeditiously to say, we're going to focus on this thing first. And then mm -hmm. these other things we're going to continue on through June. So it might, it might, you might elicit different bidders looking at them. And you could even have two different IFBs go out technically. Just mm -hmm. a thought. I'm not sure if Anthony has thoughts on that. Oh, okay. No further. Great. You answered my question because I was actually going to ask that. Why do they all have, they don't, they don't, I was feeling like they didn't all have to be due on the same date because we're, we have that piece of essential stuff that need like the mental health stuff, whatever that needs to be taken care of immediately. We need to have something in place, but then we have stuff that's like, it's important and very, it needs to be taken care of, but it doesn't have the urgency as far as needing to be on this, you know, April 9th or whatever, de whatever date we decide on, it doesn't have to be that urgent, but, and that would, that would open it up to more um, people who would want to be able to bid on it because, you know, there may be other organizations working on other stuff that could really help us, but they're working on other stuff. And with a short deadline, they wouldn't be able to help us. But then if they had a longer one, then yeah, that might, that might work to our benefit. Ms. Walker. Um, so I was actually just going to say the same thing as Mr. Vernon Jones and that um, if we are going to put this out, I think we should put it out with the date for our first meeting in it. I know Mr. Vernon Jones proposed the 25th. If that's possible, I think that would be great. I was going to propose um, a day then the following week in case it took a little bit longer to get to reach out to references or whatsoever might happen in that process. Well, I think uh, Mr. Delaney was was um, articulating what would be the the ideal if you could if you could make it happen, um, and uh, it seemed like the the twenty third or maybe even the twenty fourth would be the the really good if it would happen. In, in that quick a time. And so the next, you know, the next day would be the meeting. Um, I don't know. I mean, we'd have to also be prepared for that meeting as a group too. So we, you know, just saying that it's a lot going on there at that, that particular time. So what, what does the group think about going with the, you know, B as a, a separate uh, entity and, and sticking with um, A and C as the, um, as the other two? Mr. Vernon Jones? I like that approach. Uh, I still wonder whether Mr. Bachman could give us another week even on that one piece. Um, but I like splitting them and putting it out as a separate invitation for bid with a short, with a earlier timeline for the alternative services and the uh, significantly later timeline for the community outreach and the other one. Yeah, that, that resonates with me too, especially on the community outreach side, because that's pretty extensive and it's probably a lot deeper than we probably even anticipate at this point. Um, and it's gonna, gonna grow, so. Um, other folks who haven't sp spoken to this, and I, I, can't, I can't see whether um, Ms. Bowman has her hand up or not, Ms., um, you know, because the screen's not on. I can see everybody else's hand, so somebody needs to help me with that. Um, Ms. Ferreira. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. If, if, you know, just to kind of focus on the one that we need to really deal with um, for the first uh, report and then kind of have a longer timeline for, for the other um, two pieces. Um, 
But again, I think I think Mr. Delaney is kind of making some changes to the dates. But you know, we need to make sure that, like I said, I think Mr. Delaney, you put like April 30th or whatever. That's not going to be feasible for in terms of the budget and stuff. It has to be a lot earlier. Um, so, Mr. Bachman, I guess that I just need to ask you. You know, can we get an extra week for for the consultant, like April 5th or I mean, not April 5th, what am I talking about? I don't have April in front of me. Um, April 2nd or April 9th, nice. so that we're, we're our budget, so that when we get you that report that our recommendations are taken seriously and actually can be implemented. Yes, um, we could just certainly do April 9th. It just, um, you know, I'd wanna be sort of like making sure I'm watching what the consultant is doing. So it's not just suddenly a surprise at the end. We wanna, uh, you're gonna to have to be involved with, with the work that they're doing weekly. Mm -hmm. So we're all sort of like seeing where it's going and that can help us work on our yep. end. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if I could just follow up to that. Yeah, I think, you know, once these consultants are on board, I think we, we definitely need to be all involved with them because they're gonna be doing a big chunk of the work, but we need to be making sure we are giving them the direction that they need um, you know, very be very specific and very guided so that they know exact, exactly what we need them to do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was one other thing and I lost my train of thought, so I'll let someone else speak and then I'll... I'll Ms. I'll, Pat, you had your hand up. Thank so, you, Mr. Pereira. I mean, I don't have objection if we want to go with the, um, the this <laughs> one. Something that we need to ask ourselves is... Um, what is our expectation in terms of community engagement? Do we want consultant that get hired to solicit feedback from residents about um, alternative uh, public safety services that they would like to see in their community? Is it the expectation that we need to get that information? If yes, then we may want to rethink if we're going to prioritize community engagement as well. I know it's very extensive that if somebody, you know, think that they can do it, they should have enough um, ambassadors or, you know, employees to, you know, to reach out to different constituents that we have in this community. But if the goal is not for us to get input from residents about what changes they would like to see, then maybe it's not important, I don't know. Ms. Ferreira. I mean, I think in terms of that, Ms. Pat, I think you had already kind of said it. I think for we've already gathered a lot of information. We've had two forums. I think for this first portion of it, I think we really need to get have the consultants just kind of, you know, get all the information that we already have in place and the information from the forums and obviously with our guidance to really kind of hone in and um, get the information. We have um, the surveys information too, which we haven't really looked at. At least I know I haven't looked at. So that needs to be looked at. That's more uh, input, you know. We have these groups that already, you know, in, in, that we already have a list of groups. If we wanted them to do anything else, we already have those groups to kind of get some more information, you know. But I think they really have a lot already to hit the ground running. I think we just need to get, and a lot of us, as you stated, Ms. Pat, a lot of us already have, we're already at a certain point in terms of really even knowing which way we're going with this. Um, it's more so just about kind of, synthesizing all the data, getting us some fine tune points, and then us making some recommendations. That's what I, that's what I. And I'd like to, would like to offer in addition to that, I think when we're talking about recommendations, we're, we're not there yet, but these aren't kind of recommendations I see us making that are going to be kind of a one and done thing. You know, we do our thing, we make these recommendations and then just walk away from it. That these recommendations would probably have some you know, some legs under it in a way that resonates with the community beyond the work of the uh, community safety working group. So these recommendations are gonna have some longevity in, in the town and have some continuance in the town. So even at, at, you know, in let's say, at some point we might not get all of it caught up in our, in our recommendations, but the recommendation if they're stated such can do enough follow-up work to continue and expand the work going forward and have it have some meaning over time. Um, so the recommendations are, some are gonna be more immediate, certainly some are gonna be more concrete. Others might be a little more subjective and um, you know, involving 
uh, ongoing commitment from from the community and the police department, for example. So I I, I think we can we do our best uh, getting back to what Ms. Ferreira is saying, getting back to you know making recommendations that are going to be uh, doable, you know achievable. The the recommendations that are worth fighting for, if you will, and that uh, that the, you know people are going to say yes, this group did its job. So I, it's it's a fine line between trying to get it done quickly, boom, 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 to meet a deadline. And we don't want to miss having quality in there as well. So that's the dilemma we're all struggling with. But you know, if we put our sort of nose to the grindstone kind of thing, we can we can we can make it happen for sure. We, we are gonna need a little more time though, Mr. Bachum. And so, you know, that's that's in the works. Other comments? Mr. Delaney, then Mr. Jones, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, I was just trying to take the temperature if we're if we have a consensus on what we would like as a as a timeline. I've currently got for B for emerging trends first draft by March 26th report completed by April 2nd, with I guess the expectation that it turns around to the council by the 9th. And then I kind of picked for uh, community engagement, just picked out of the hat dates in April. Uh, and we don't actually have any dates on part C yet, but I, I'm just plugging those in based on other comments, but I don't know what consensus is, so. Or, uh, or Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones's comment, and then we can take the temperature. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with those dates. I would think that we might want some interim data from the community engagement folks. Uh, not that they would be finished, but we could get a preliminary report from them in order in time to inform our alternative services proposal. And I don't know whether that needs to be in the bid or whether that's just part of how we supervise them once they're they're hired. Uh, so that's one question. And the second one, I didn't. I, I was hoping to get a response from you, Mr. Delaney, about the possibility of uh, requesting written references. Yes, Mr. Delaney. Okay. So to the first point, uh, we have this proposed project schedule section uh, in the IFB that was that was blank until now. Uh, I think it might make sense to include lines that say like progress update on part A mm -hmm. and then a meeting date. Um, yep. I think that would be that would be good to fill in. Um, written references. So I wasn't entirely clear. So we're, we're going to re require that references be submitted in writing. Um, generally on, on my bids, that takes the form of name, title, phone number, or email address, and then I, I, you know, normally if it's a carpenter or something, then I'm then I'm calling the reference and saying, "How was their work? Was it done on time? Were there any change orders?" I'd be doing something similar here, but were you thinking more like a letter of recommendation? Kind yes, of? I was. Mm -hmm. I was thinking these should be detailed letters of recommendation that give some <clears throat> provides flesh out all these things we've said are uh, minimum requirements. Um, because I think we, we may be in the case of trying to decide whether a bidder meets that or not. Uh, and it would be good if we had a written statement that, you know, three people could look at and talk about whether, you know, does this one really meet our minimum requirements or does it not? Um, and then we, we would make phone calls to, to verify, but uh, I think we really want to have written statements, references to analyze uh, because the whole selection process may hang on whether or not we think they've met the minimum requirements that we've specified. I would, I would agree with that. And uh, also around getting very specific written um, recommendations, it's, it speaks specifically to the skill sets and experience of people. Sometimes I, you, we, we, might, we might get a reference, a, a recommendation that speaks very highly of the person, but doesn't go into any detail about what their knowledge base is, what their experience is, what their capacity to do the work is. And uh, you don't get a good read on the person. In fact, they might be really the best, but because the recommendation didn't speak to it sufficiently, it's very easy to, to, you know, to bypass such a person. So, Ms. Ferreira. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I'm okay with letter recommendations, especially if they're detailed and specific. Um, but we would definitely need to follow up with calls. I don't oh. think the letter recommendations replaces the calls. Um, just because, you know, I know I, I haven't hired people in the past um, based on, on talking, doing, you know, talking, doing the reference checks and talking to the people and really asking some key questions, um, which yep, would be a lot. <laughs> so, yep. um, because, yeah. So anyway, that's my only point. Yeah. So let me go back to uh, Mr. Delaney's point of reference where we we're talking about the temperature in the room. Uh, you know, before us is the idea that we would go forward uh, with uh, our section B along that uh, that timeline of April 2nd, April 9th, uh, hopefully April 9th, um, and then put the others on a different time frame, Mr. Laney. And um, is that something, I'm not looking at the thing right now, so I can't get it specifically, but um, is that something that is, resonating with the with the working group right now as a, a path to follow. And just uh, raise the hands or thumbs up. Okay. I want to say something. Okay. As long as there I can't is see Tashina uh, Bowman, so I can tell. Yes, Ms. Pat. As long as there is a language, I think Mr. Delaney already stated it, uh, interim progress as suggested by Mr. Ross. I'll be okay with that. With, yes. the, uh, yeah. yes. with the community engagement, if there is going to be an interim progress, so we can extend the date, I'll be okay with that. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that, certainly. Um, I think everyone else is, I think. <laughs> I don't wanna speak for everyone else. Um, also getting back to the point of, you know, if we, if we have a consultant, the consultant, you know, does work for us, so it, you know, we we can ask for things. We can, you know, um, you know, unless it's outrageous, you know, we go outside of the, we're not going to go outside of the, their agreement. But uh, it would be important to have these timelines in place so that they do know they're going to interact with us, and we're going to have questions, and we're going to have input. So, I, I think this works out fine. Thank you all. Any any other comments, Mr. Laney? Um. So I have one comment and then one question. Um, so we will get this up. Uh, as soon as I have a link, I will share it with, uh, with Ms. Moyston to forward onto the committee. Uh, and you guys can share it with your, with your other groups, with people you think might be interested or who know people that might be interested. Um, that link will probably come on, uh, probably come on Monday morning, first thing. Um, you can, you are also free to send me any contact info that you have, and I can reach out to them directly when the link goes live, uh, either way. Um, if anyone you reach out to has questions, if they're really basic questions like, where is the bid? You, you can answer that. But if they have substantive questions about what's meant here, uh, could you clarify this? Those should really be submitted in writing, uh, to me. And uh, that's both to prevent anyone from getting in trouble or getting inside info, but also if there's a, if many people are asking the same question, that signals to me that maybe something's mm -hmm. unclear, something needs to be amended, and then we can get that out to everybody. Um, and my last question is, I was wondering if maybe we could come up with a catchier title, um, because I've got it as consulting services for the community safety working group. And I've been trying to think of something that indicates exactly what we're looking for to mm -hmm. an interested party off the bat, Consult consulting services for racial equity in, uh, in community services, something, something like that, but something for something a little punchier. Mm -hmm. So I am open to suggestions. I'm not that great at that. Yeah, it's it's fine, <laughs> but if it but I think we might want to kind of wear on our sleeve from the uh, from the start that we're we're looking for uh, racial equity, racial justice. Oh, well, can you say yeah, like angle. racial equity in public safety services, something like that?
for the community safety. I know it makes it long, but it kind of yeah. goes more towards what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was. That's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mr. Bachman. For racial equity. Um, so I, th I do think what Mr. Delaney said is you will be re people will reach out to you as members of the committee um, who may be consultants and you you some of you will be making the, the you know, reviewing the bids so you have to make sure that you do not enter entertain those comments or those comments get directed for all of our organizations they all get directed to Mr. Delaney he collects them if he doesn't know the answer he reaches out and gives them this so that all of our bidders get are getting the same information so if someone asks a question he sends it to anybody who's asked for the proposal um, you know, so that yeah. so there's clarity so right thank you can I just go back to the name I'm and this, this will probably give evidence of why I'm not good at this but um is can it, you see? Yeah, I can't. Okay, yeah, I'm going to call on you in just a second. Yeah, now I can see you. It's so it's, uh, is it for this community safety working group or is it for the town of Amherst? Um, it's, it's, it's for both, really. Um, the fact that it's for the community safety working group might not be important in the title. Um, the bid ad is going to lead with the town of Amherst. It'll be in the headline. Okay, so, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Ms. Pat. So, um, Mr. Bachman, thank you for raising that. Um, because sometimes um, people who didn't get the bid might challenge. And um, it's very important. That's why I volunteered to be part of the reviewing because it has to be very transparent and um um, what is what I want to use on spacing out, but we cannot be all of us like giving information to different people uh, because if they didn't, if people didn't end up getting the debate, the they might challenge and ask questions why they didn't. So we really have to be careful in the community as to information we can answer to potential um, bidders. I speak from experience, that's why. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. So thank you. I um, I guess we're all set with this at this particular time and we'll hear from you, Mr. Delaney, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I just wanted to express my real appreciation to Mr. Delaney for his work with the subcommittee and with us tonight uh, and to Mr. Bockelman for his input uh, on this and his problem solving as we start talked about the dates and decided to split this tonight. I think we're, we're fortunate to have both of you. Yes. Three, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll move ahead then. Thank you all very much again. Thanks also for the, the folks, again, our working group folks for working on this uh, and getting us to this point. Appreciate it. Um, we had talked about compensation for citizens participating in our surveys uh, and, and getting information back to us. And I think we left it where we were gonna have a conversation about it. We had talked about the, uh, the amount of $25 as, a, as a, our first point of reference and wanted to go bring us back up to the group to, to find out one, if we're still in, uh, in line with that thinking and what might be some of the considerations going forward in terms of how that is managed, um, under what circumstances do uh, folks um, receive such a stipend, if you will, um, how often, <laughs> if, you, if you do multiple surveys, those kinds of things. So I, uh, I, I know we're all in favor of doing something to support that uh, in, in the name of $25, but I'd like to get some clarity on it and maybe come up with a proposal on what we need to do to move this forward. Ms. Pat and then uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, for the sake of time, may I recommend that we have a subcommittee work on this and you know maybe present something next time if it's okay with people or do we have enough time tonight to discuss it? It's up to you guys. Um, I, I'd be happy to, to, to and welcome the work of a subcommittee. Um, um, and Mr. Vernon, I'll, I'll say something else to that, but Mr. Vernon Jones, you had your hand up? 
Well, I, I'm fine with the subcommittee. I just wanted to say I support the $25 for people who uh, came to the forums and testified or might in the future. Uh, I would not support it for people filling out the survey. I mean, we may get scores of white people right. filling out the survey or spend t five, 10 minutes on it. I don't think we, I would much prefer what uh, um, Ms. Moyston recommended earlier that we uh, have a lottery, you know, we have a, a bigger prize, a 50 or $100 gift certificate or something. And, and it's a lottery for people doing the survey. Ms. Herrera? Yeah, I mean, I think we should um, kind of give a choice too, you know, yeah. kind of put it that if folks want to take the $25, they take it, you know what I'm saying? We're, 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 we're giving it, the, you know, yeah. offering it to them, but some folks might not. They might want to just keep it, you know, so that we can keep doing the work that we're doing. I think we want to give that choice. Um, I think, uh, I think, yeah, for anyone that that spoke and anyone that speaks in the future, because that takes a lot of courage, you know, to kind of go on there. Mm -hmm. And obviously the surveys, yes, it takes courage too, but you know, again, you can be anonymous, you don't have to put your name and, and that's a little bit less kind of demanding. Um, so I agree with Mr. Vernon Jones in terms of just having some type of lottery or something like that for, for the surveys. What the comments, Ms. Walker? Um, I also agree with what everybody just said. Um, I think those are all really great ideas. I would support a subcommittee like finalizing all of this, um, but I just wanted to put out there that I support the $25 gift cards um, for anyone who comes to speak at the forums. I do think that's a good idea for the lottery for people who do the survey. Um, and I also just wanted to put back out there that Miss Pat at one point had mentioned gift cards to black owned businesses. Mm -hmm. And I also mm -hmm. think that that's a very good idea. And I would be in support of any of those things. Well, I, I, this this is helpful. I'm not, not cutting this discussion off certainly, but this, this is helpful now because I wanted to go back to Miss Pat about the, the subcommittee. It would be good to have uh, a couple of people or three maybe get together and come up with a, a, a statement for us to look at. And we already got several ideas just right here that, that seem to resonate with people. And if that could be put into some statement that could be shared with Ms. Moyston and share with the group, we could take a look at it at the next meeting and um, you know, come up with an, you know, what, what might be our next steps and what we want to put in place. Would you, would you be willing to? Yeah, I, I'm willing that? to volunteer and I will need two more people to volunteer <laughs> because I feel very strongly about $25. You got to get the right people because you don't want too many writers on it. You know, they just they'll mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> would someone like to join Ms. Pat uh, with that charge, Ms. Owen? All right. Awesome. Thank you. Sashina. Oh. I can't see her, so I don't. Are you there, Miss Bowen? Bowman. Okay, yeah, I can work. You want to join here. us? Yeah. Um, I. I'm not sure that I want to join the subcommittee right now. Okay, that's I'm, okay. I'm, yeah, it's. I'm just. I'm doing a lot of listening right now. Um. To. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of, of, of listening right now. I need to like sit and absorb it and think about it for a while. I'd like to I'd like to ask you, Miss Pat, to to work with Ms. Owen and uh, exactly. I just, think just move that good. forward. Um, I think we're good. We're good. You're, you're very good. The two of you working on that would be fine. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure. Yeah. We'll be All fine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we'll, we'll get you a report next week. Yes, if you can get that to Ms. Moyston, yeah. um, you know, for our agenda, maybe Monday. I'm assuming that we're going to take a, a Wednesday meeting next week. <laughs> we have to go to that. But we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, but you'll do that. So um, uh, going forward, uh, I think we've hit all our agenda items except for the upcoming events and next meeting date. Uh, in the last two items. Upcoming, I have a, yeah, I'm sorry. I have yeah. a question. The letter yeah. that DW sent to us that has to do with um, the, the consulting thing, should we refer 
maybe we should refer her to Mr. Delaney. The letter that I saw a letter that was sent to I just saw it just, yeah. just uh, briefly before the meeting started because yeah. I was coming from somewhere else. Um, and uh, the people I, know I want what me I'm to saying. pull it up. I, I don't know, but Miss 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 Walker, let me see what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Um, well, I actually I saw the email as well. Um, I don't know if that's something everyone wants to talk about right now, but I would prefer if we don't just defer it to Mr. Delaney because those were things that I also wanted to discuss. And I wanted to, well, or we could defer it to him, but in the presence of the group, because I also was curious about those things. Okay, well, I just Yeah, I, uh, uh, Ms. Ferreira, and then. Uh, well, I guess is that something because since it came after the, you know, agenda yeah. items were supposed to go in, should we talk? Can we talk about it a little bit in that whatever didn't come wasn't anticipated within the 48 hours? So it fits okay. underneath. Yeah, let me the just bid. Me, go around. So, Ms. Oh, it can, we can talk it, it under fits the bid. underneath the bid conversation, I would think, right? Oh, okay. And. I'm just wondering if you want me to pull the questions up. I took them out of yeah. the email because I yeah. couldn't get it to show up good. here. Mm -hmm. You can pull it up. Yeah. How many of you have read it? Okay. Oh, can you guys see it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Ms. Walker has. Did you have your hand, uh, hand? I can't. Sometimes I can't. Oh yeah, Ms. Walker, there it is. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, I just wanted to also bring up that yesterday at our subcommittee meeting, we had a pretty in-depth conversation about um, services for interpreting interpreting our meetings and our documents that we're going to be providing to the public. And so I actually thought that the first bullet point that was sent to us made a very good point or was actually something that I, I would want to know uh, because we talked about the lack of availability for interpretation for public services that the town does provide it but it's available at uh, the request of the people who need it so the the people who need the interpretation would have to request those services be avail available in advance of whatever uh, meeting or event is happening and so I'm wondering about how accessible that is and then also we talked about not putting the, the responsibility of getting things interpreted on the consulting team because that's a lot for them to do within their budget and their time. And so that that would be something that us as a group would want to figure out. And so I thought that this was just a, like kind of a great question as a follow-up to the discussion that we had yesterday as a, sub, as a group, as a subcommittee group. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments about this? Um, Ms. Pat? I would like to hear from either Mr. Bachman or Mr. Delaney um, in terms of the number one, uh, the first one, the police budget and the 80,000 K for the consulting contract. Uh, I, I guess I would know what I don't know what the question is that you're posing. Yeah. So, well, I mean, basically, the question that DW has raised, you know, I think she's suggesting that um, the consulting work regarding police research should come from police budget. It's her question, if I read it correctly, instead of getting it out of 80,000 K. Right, but that's, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying what Miss Pat was saying. It's just like that, you know, with the bid that, you know, the, the 80,000 that Mr. Bachman, that you said that, that the town has, <laughs> that is disposable, disposable to do this. But the stuff that we're asking to do that's relevant to the police, DW is basically saying, why can't, the, why can't that come out of the police budget? Since it's dealing with kind of police trends, what else to do around policing, blah blah blah. Why can't it come out of their budget? So we did not budget for this in the police budget. I budgeted the eighty thousand dollars as a separate standalone item outside of the police budget. 
so that it was not under the control of the police budget. So, um, so it, it was explicitly set aside for this kind of work. Um, you know, the, the, the police budget doesn't have a, a sum of money budgeted for this kind of work in it. Hmm. Okay. Um, can Ms. Walker and then Ms. Ferreira. Um, I'm just wondering, does the police budget have a section for research? No, not research, no. That I'm, not that I'm aware of. And then I Ms. guess just, just a follow up in terms of what Ms. Walker was saying earlier. What about the whole, I guess I'm still confused about the translation interpretation um, situation because yeah, we don't want it to be on anyone to kind of get that. It needs to be us providing interpretation when you know we go out and solicit information to, to folks, you know, especially by BIPOC folks, folks, English is a second language um, situation. And then also if we need to interpret you know, the survey, I need to interpret other documents that we're sharing, you know, we might want to interpret the report, you know, so that folks understand how to read the report, because, because folks that are from different languages, especially if we look at, you know, Spanish, Mandarin, you know, um, which are the, the, the major languages in, in the town, we might need to do that, um, so that people have access to that information. Um, so how is that going to work, I guess, because I don't think we should put it on, on the consultants. I, I thought, I Ms. thought hang on, hang on, Ms. Pat, hang on, Ms. Pat. Um, Ms. Owens, and then uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, and then Ms. Pat. No, wait, Ms. Bowman Ms. has Bowman. her hand up too. I can't, yeah. sorry, I can't see her. That's why I keep missing her. Yeah. So let me, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Bowman. No, I re I'm already done. I already okay. said what I need to do. Ms. I think Ms. Bowman was, was next because her hand has been up for a while. Yeah, Ms. Bowman. Bowman. Ms. Bowman. Ms. Hi. Um, so I kind of, okay, my question had to do with does, when is the next time that the police budget is going to be assessed? Um, I guess that's a question for Mr. Bachelman. And then, um, oh my gosh, I forgot. I forgot my other question. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot my other question. If it comes back to me, I'll ask. But yeah, yeah just for the for the first part is just when when do we reassess? When does the police budget get reassessed? Is that yearly or is that you know quarterly or whatever? Um, because I think I think I really do kind of agree that the police should have a a point a, a place in their budget for research. Um, and then, oh, I remember the other one. And then the other thing was that about the interpretation, I thought Mr. Bachelman said that um, the interpretation was available, but we needed to, that it needs to be asked for, but can we, um, can we request that as part of, like, can we kind of, how do I say this? Can we like, just have like request it as part of what we're doing like so that we don't have to ask every time like we just have we just have it available is there any way that we can just have it available like our group is requesting to have this available um without having to have um a person from the community to request it I don't know if that makes sense. So let me let me give, give Mr. Bachman a chance to answer that. And then Ms. Pat, you had her hand up. So I, I'd like to go to you right after that. So again, the, the police budget is submitted on May 1st of every year for it. So I will be submitting a, a new budget for the police on May 1st for FY22, which is the, the fiscal year beginning mm -hmm. July 1. Uh, interpretation services is a service that we pay, purchase. And so typically when we have a project, if we want that service included in the project, we would say we want this service included. And then the, the consultant can build that into their, their pricing structure. Um, you know, we, it's important as we start to, to go down this road to be specific about what's, what kind of interpretation and what kind of translation we're looking for. If it's interpretation of meetings, what languages do we want to have 
represented there because each person who's there who's or usually multiple people um if it's um spanish or um AS, asl or whatever it is we have to purchase those services and our, our 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 path typically is to say consultant you provide these services and you procure them so we know what the all-in price is for the services that you're providing um and so, and then and if, you, if we go into translation, which means we're taking the document and translating it, that's a different service that we would purchase as well. So typically, instead of doing a different procurement for those things, it's better to have the consultant responsible for, for doing that all at once. So there's no finger pointing or, you know, going around. Ms. Pat. I was just going to ask Mr. Bachman if it's possible to use some of the funds um, I know that the, you know, the town has raised um, the position of two police officers. Can we use some of those funds for the, for what um, DWO have questioned for? So what we have reserved those funds for is to determine what this committee is coming up with. Um, you know, initially it was, we were, we we're going to have a proposal by January 31, which obviously was, was too ambitious. And then if there were going to be, and, and I think the idea on that was that we didn't want to wait till July 1 to make the change. If there was going to be a different thing, we would have money available to make the actual change mm -hmm. for that. So, but I, you know, I think the, um, the services that we need for this short period of time that they have to work in, $80,000 should certainly meet the needs for all the things that the council, that the working group is looking for. Mm -hmm. Ms. Walker. Um, um, sorry. So also, I just wanted to say that I, my understanding was that we were doing an IFB and so that we wouldn't be using the full 80,000 for any, con for any contract that we're awarding to any um, consulting team. Mm -hmm. So their full budget will not be the full 80k. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that the town should be able to provide interpretation services because that should be something that should be available through the town in general anyways. Um, and that we shouldn't have to take that out of that budget. Because I think like you were saying, that's, we have to pay for that. And I, I think these events that we will be having deserve every type of interpretation that we can obtain, like any language that we can obtain of any residents of Amherst, we should get as many as possible. Because I think that that's the barrier to access that we're trying to address here. And those are the, that's the audience that we're reaching out to. And I also am just have a little bit of difficulty understanding how we can ask people to request those things if they can't even understand what's happening. So uh, in following up with that, Mr. Bachman, um, early on in our work, um, you had stated that uh, the, this working group has resources at its disposal to help us do our work. And um, would that be, un, would translation and interpretation services be under that, under that umbrella, let's say, if in fact we said, in order for us to, to reach out to the community, we're going to need uh, translation uh, services, for example, for that, 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 whatever it is going forward, translations um, and, or interpretations for whatever things we see coming up either events or documents that we're putting out, um, would that fall under that category and not have anything to do at all with the, um, you know, with the uh, potential consultant? If it's work that the consultant is doing, if the consultant is organizing an outreach meeting, I would expect the consultant to provide all the services that we've articulated that we want. So we want that to be a successful outreach meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if there are things that the working group itself is doing, if you're doing, you know, and you say we would like additional services, that can come out of that eighty thousand dollars. You know, we, we are talking about some stipends coming out of that, or some. So there's there's things already being targeted for that eighty thousand dollars that we have. We don't have a separate budget. I mean, Ms. Boyson works on this somewhat in terms of trying to get um, different people to help with interpretation. And uh, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't do a great job at that as a town. And we don't um, set aside a, a sum of money to do that for all of our meetings, quite honestly. And, and we have done it for some. Um, and, it, and it gets, it, um, you know, so, it, but it, it, you know, we don't do it for all of our meetings for sure. 
Ms. Pat. So if we're trying to make some of farmers, our community, an inclusive, welcoming um, community, I mean, services like that, I, I would think that perhaps with this project that we're doing, we can think about, and I'm coming from business perspective, could we, you know, whatever um, this, uh, the yeah, services that the town purchase, can we have them as um, retainer for the uh, period of the time that the consultants will be doing some work? Meaning if we need them, yes, I, we do, don't set aside some money to pay them so that we have them on hand if we need them. I think we, we should think about retainer fee to this translation services. And I don't mean like, you know, big farm or something like that. Even in, you know, there are um, native, there's a lot of native speaking folks in our town that, you know, could be approached and said, you know, uh, we're going to give you this amount of retainer so that, you know, if we do need you to translate something for us, you know, can we count on you? Is where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And that, and that person, it doesn't have to be working with our group alone. It could be with the council, with other committees we have in town. I mean, if we're really, it takes a lot. If we're going to be inclusive community, there's a lot involved. And if we're going to make my park committee um, feel that we're a welcoming town, it takes a lot of work and money. And, you know, we should really think about devoting resources to do this right. That's where I'm coming from. Ms. Walker, I'm sorry. Um, I also really agree with what Ms. Pat was just saying. Um, and then I just wanted to add if, like I do want to still look into how we can make this possible and how we can make translation services available at as many events and with as many documents as possible. But I'm also wondering if this can be something that we add into our recommendations, because I think this is something that absolutely needs to be in the town budget regularly. Um, and I don't know how we could work, but it adds to how safe our community is and can be if we can communicate with the people that live here. I already did. It's in one of my recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's a good point. In fact, um, just going back in, in years here, um, maybe this register with Mr. Vernon Jones as well in our previous lives, trying to get translation and interpretation services uh, in the schools was very difficult because it wasn't just trying to find someone who spoke the language. It was, it was language, it was culture, it was you know, very nuanced. So you had to get someone with good writing skills, you had to get someone with good speaking skills who, you know, you know, would fit all of the bills for the community you're trying to serve. And so then that, that, that also makes it a little, not, it's doable, but it makes it a little more difficult to find who is that person who can do that for us or for the town. So um, I like your, your notion, uh, your idea, um, Ms. Walker, about, you know, putting this some way in a recommendation, because uh, especially as the police are working with uh, a very, you know, multi-ethnic, multicultural community, uh, and they're multilingual for sure, that this would be something that would have some benefit over time as well as now, so. Is this something that um, we want to communicate to um, Mr. Delaney? His name came up earlier. Um, Ms. Pat? So the only reason why I'm, you know, when I first read the email, immediately from business perspective, I knew right away this is a budgetary issue, yeah. you know, that we defer it to, to the staff, um, meaning either Mr. Danelli, uh, Danelli, sorry, Delaney, or the town manager. But I think in looking back, I think it's good that we, we had some conversation around this, but I didn't think we will resolve it because it's budget issue. It is what it is. 
Mm -hmm. Mr. Vernon Jones. I do think it's important that someone respond to uh, this letter. Uh, it does seem to me like the police budget question is really a town manager question. Yes. Uh, with regard to translation and interpretation, an earlier draft of our uh, request for bids uh, had the consultants providing translation and or interpretation for every meeting. Uh, and we decided that we, or our subcommittee, that we we were not prepared to specify which languages or which meetings. Uh, so the current bid, invitation for bid, uh, leaves the responsibility with the consultant only for written materials, advertising meetings, be translated into Spanish. And again, it's not a portion of their potential earnings, presumably they budget for that. Uh, with regard to the last thing, we, there was some language originally uh, in an earlier version of the bid request that mentioned in-person meetings, but I believe all that language has been removed. Yes. Everything is by Zoom now. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and you know, I we had this discussion about responding to uh, information and inquiries and comments coming from the community. And, uh, you know, I did say I would take on that responsibility, be happy to respond to DW on this and uh, get a response back. Uh, I welcome drafting something and running it by uh, uh, all of you, if you'd like, to see if it's in keeping with what we need to say. But one, acknowledging that we've received it, one that we've begun, we've begun talking about it, certainly, and what we might be thinking about in terms of how to you know properly answer the questions in the context of our work. So I'd be happy to do that and share it outright. Yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. Thank you for being willing to do that, Paul. I think that's great. Uh, I would run the response by Mr. Delaney though, because it yeah. does refer to the bid and we wanna make sure we're not- Exactly. Uh, DW may be a potential bidder, so we want to make sure we're not in violation of anything. That's there. true, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will do that. So you get some email from me, Ms. Moyston. <laughs> Any other points, comments on that matter? Um, thank you, Ms. Pat, for bringing that up. And, uh, You're welcome. Um, Most likely we'll be coming back to that at some point, I'm sure. So anyway, um, let's see, where do we go here? Upcoming events. Ms. Moyston. Tashina has her hand raised. Thank you. Ms. Bowman. Hi, um, I'm sorry, I gotta go put my son to bed. So I'm gonna have to log off. Um, but I just wanted to thank everybody for their input today. And um, yeah, um, be in contact. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Tashina. Glad you could be with Thank us. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Stay safe. Good night. <laughs> Working mom. I do think we need to wrap up. Yeah, we are. I was waiting for Ms. Moisten now to tell me what her event. Oh, yep. So uh, now I forgot. February 9th is the first Lunar New Year celebration with yeah. the town. So I um, am very excited that we are celebrating the Lunar New Year and we have a storyteller coming to tell us um, the, the story of the Lunar New Year and how it became. So you can find all of that in the news and announcements on the website. All right, thank you. What time is it at though? What time? On the 9th at 5.30. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. Thanks very much. Our next meeting date.
next Wednesday, 5.30. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, next meeting day, uh, Wednesday, 5.30. Uh, please get your agenda items in to Ms. Uh, Moyston, if you have any. Um, I would say, I would suggest what, Monday noon is good? Yes. And I'm just assuming, do we want to put this email back on the agenda? Yes, I would love, love to have that on the agenda. Actually, I was going to put that on myself. But yes, let's do that. And any other, if you have some agenda items, let's get them to her so I can take some liberty again uh, to put some time to these, unless you tell me how much time you think you need to talk about it. And I'll try to work with it. But if I have it ahead of time, I can do that. Thank you. Uh, any other topics? Okay. Hearing none, I'd welcome a, a motion to adjourn. So move. Mr. Vernon Jones, thank you. Second. Second. I second. Favor, say hey. Say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye, we're, everybody. I think Bye. we're adjourning at what time is this? 7.35? That's pretty good. That's a record. That's a record. <laughs> uh, Ms. Walker, your, your children are going to be quite happy tonight. Oh, yeah. Can you hear them? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for working with that schedule, too. Appreciate it. Thank you all yeah. for your work. Good night, good night everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.